Okay, um, thank you for joining our bi-weekly course meeting. Uh, today, I will be your moderator. Matthias will help me in taking the notes. And um, please add yourself to the attendees uh, if you have not already added yourself there. Um, and at the beginning, maybe um, if some of you have any questions or feedback from the previous uh, core meeting or from the previous activities taking place on Kima, um, you can do it now or um, after we finish our agenda topics, you can also uh, anytime stop us and ask questions about each of the items there. Um, the first topic we can start with is um, about Kima 1.4. Uh, it was released um, in, um, <clears throat> Last weekend, you can find the recording on, uh, you can find the release, sorry, on GitHub. Um, Piotr uh, PK already previously in the previous uh, core SIG uh, gave a detailed uh, description of what to expect in this release. Uh, we have a couple of new um, interesting components like Ori OAuth 2, and uh, we have a um, as usual, the regular uh, enhancements and new feature that we have added, which you can all read about in, either in the release node itself or on our Kima Project IO blog uh, release page, where you will be able to find um, the detailed description of what was released in 1.4. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda, Matej will be uh, talking about uh, Git as an add-on repository, uh, which was recently also added to Kima. Um, Matthias, I think you can uh, take it from here. Yeah, okay, so just let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay, let me choose the... Okay, I hope that you can see it. Uh, you should see the Kima. Yes. Uh, that's okay. So uh, basically, Today I want to show you our new feature that we added for the Kima 1.4. And um, I will start with a little bit of a background. Uh, for those who don't know, in Kima we have a component called Helm Broker. Um, that guy is responsible for uh, exposing Helm chart in the service catalog view. So if you go to the catalog UI there, you can see some charts. And to do so, the Helm broker used the concept of the add-ons. Mm, abstraction, that abstraction gives you ability to add additional information about uh, required information, which are used to convert Helm chart to a service class. For example, the information about the documentation, um, some plans, and also the input parameters. It's quite easy. And at the beginning, those bundles, those add-ons was were um, fetched from the remote repositories. Those remote repositories should be in the HTTP format. Uh, so basically, you have a, some HTTP server which serves static content. There, you uploaded your zipped add-ons with additional index, and that URL URL you registered in the Helm broker. But we have a feedback that it's not too easy to have a server with that compressed bundles because mostly our user just have a Git repository with uh, add-ons in a, an archive form, like a directory where you have your chart and here additional information about it. And that's all. They don't want to take care of releasing that and having a shell server. And because of that, we added support directly for, the, for any Git repository um, that you can have. Basically, in that Git repository, you should have directory of your bundles and simple index as it was in the previous version. But when you're defining the URL for that, you should specify additional um, prefix. In that case, you should use the Git prefix. Then you should provide URL to clone your repository. And after double slashes, slash, you should provide path to your index that you want to register. Uh, it is really easy. I can show you that on our Kima cluster. Let me just copy that example. Uh, I can go to the add-ons configuration view, add new configuration, and there in a URL, just provide the 
URL. That URL can be always copied from your UI on the GitHub. You can copy it that. Then after double slash, slashes, I provide the path to the our index. In my case, it will be placed in an add-on directory. I will choose the index yum with acceptance test. So in that case, it should add me one bundle called acceptance test. Let's do it. Okay, and let me add it. As you can see, our configuration was added. Besides the normal configuration, we have our Git repository. When I will go back one more time to our catalog view, then I, after a couple of seconds, I should see a new bundle called testing acceptance. Let me give it just a few seconds. Uh, before we proceed, I can also mention that before uh, you can also specify the reference. You can point for branch name, for tag, and also for some commit. Um, that is really useful if you have some revision on your Git repository. And let's check if it was added. Okay, let me check if the validation was correct one. Yeah, I can see I have a typo here, so we just remove it and copy it one more time because the path was incorrect. So basically, one more time, copy that URL, git prefix, double slashes, one more time, the full path to our index yam. In a previous example, I skipped the add-ons directory. So one more time, add-ons, then the full path one more time. Okay, it was added. So let's validate the URL. Yeah, that one is the correct one. Go to the namespace. And after a couple of seconds, it should be visible here. Um, what's more, I can also spoiler that we will add the support for additional protocols like S3, GCS, and so on. So besides the Git prefix, you will be able to specify the S3, GTS, and stuff like that, and then provide the URL for your add-ons. And also in near future, you will be able to also provide URL for your private repository. Right now we don't have, we do not support any authorization, but probably in the next milestone or in the next release, we just add that uh, to our hand broker. Yeah, and as you can see, new bundle was added and it has some sample documentation. I think that is all from my side, but maybe you have some question to what I presented to you. Okay, if not, then thank you very much. And we can go to the next item. Okay, that was super cool. Thanks, Matthias. Um, let me share my screen again. Okay, for our next item, we have, um, we wanted to talk more about what we are going to focus on the next uh, release for Knative, uh, because as you probably have uh, known uh, before, we are planning to put more focus uh, on um, replacing our and enhancing our foundational layers or the serverless foundational layer uh, with um, Knative specific uh, components and also um, uh, dedicating more resources and a specific team for uh, Knative contribution uh, for that specific target. Uh, and um, on the next release, uh, we are combining forces with the rest of the community uh, on Knative 0 0.9. And specifically for the eventing part, we started discussing what are um, our uh, main targets that we want to achieve in order to have um, what um, uh, can be replacing our currently event bus, uh, which is uh, a new model in eventing that is called the broker trigger. And to have a production ready broker trigger, we wanted to focus more on the observability and uh, operational aspects of the uh, whole Knative eventing. And uh, also we wanted to focus on 
performance and uh, optimizations for uh, the broker. And uh, there are also a couple of missing features where um, we think this uh, combined together will provide a more production ready, uh, user friendly broker trigger model that we will probably in the following release um, replace our current even bus with that one. Um, so if you want to also um, uh, know what will, what is happening there, you can join the Canative Slack and um, uh, the user groups to f know out more about um, uh, what is happening for the next uh, broker trigger model in eventing. Um, any questions about this? Okay, um, the next agenda item is uh, about a new feature that we added in Kima, uh, which we wanted to um, give you a small demo about, which is uh, supporting cloud events, uh, specifically uh, the version 03 of the specs of cloud events, uh, because also we wanted to have some feedback from the community about um, the desire of uh, migrating from the um, our proprietary protocol to uh, the cloud events or our custom protocol to our uh, cloud events uh, protocol. Um, and uh, based on that, um, uh, let me give you a brief overview about uh, currently. Um, this uh, used to be our protocol for publishing events uh, from an external solution. Uh, we had our own um, uh, headers uh, where that are we can you can say cloud event inspired, uh, but uh, they are not uh, strictly cloud event compliant, and uh, this was all under V1 um, uh, paths. Um, what we did is that we added a um, uh, V2 API, which you can use to um, publish your own uh, cloud events compatible. That also gives you um, um, the whole freedom to use whatever client you want. For example. Cloud event has its own Go and Java uh, SDKs that you can use to send uh, cloud events um, and uh, among other um, SDKs that you can find under the cloud events uh, repo. Um, so let me quickly give you a small demo about uh, that happening. Um, let me give you also a brief introduction where I have a very uh, um, small Lambda, uh, which um, just logs and prints uh, the headers that it receives from the event. Um, because also you can see there that the support for cloud events is not just for publi publishing events, but it's also for um, receiving um, the events in the Lambda function. So also the event that you will get in the Lambda will be also a cloud event compatible event. Um, in this aspect, we I have here quickly, um, my environment where um, I have uh, the lambda running in uh, in the lower um, in the lower uh, window. Uh, let's see, yeah, there I'm just showing the list of um, um, the list of um, um, the logs from this lambda, and uh, I'm using a very simple Go application which you can see on the right uh, on the left. Uh, this Go application basically um, uh, uses the certificate that is generated uh, and paired with the application to send a cloud event uh, to this cluster. And it is using the SD Go SDK um, cloud event, uh, Go SDK that is provided by them. And it is very simply just creating an event object, setting a couple of uh, uh, headers and values there and at the end, um, it will just uh, use the client to uh, send the event. So um, let me run the code. I, can, I think I can leave the code here. And uh, from here, I'll just uh, do a simple go run for this example, uh, where you can see that um, it successfully published and our Lambda was triggered. And these are the headers that was received which are all uh, standard cloud event uh, headers. So um, uh, specifically the source and the type are of interest for you um, among uh, all the available uh, cloud event um, headers. Any questions? Okay, 
so um, that's all for now. Um, unless you have any questions or feedback, um, we can end it now. Okay, great. Um, see you again in two weeks, folks. And um, probably then we will be also talking about the next uh, 1.5 release of Kima. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.